So I got this CQV meter and I put a video out on it and you guys loved it. Some of you guys have said you've had it for a while and some of you guys that have had it for a while have said that you have had RFI problems with it. I got my tiny SA and we're gonna check for RFI together because that's how we do things. Always protect your instrument. This is my tiny SA kit and I love this thing. It is absolutely perfect for this deal. So there's my tiny SA. This is the Ultra Plus model that goes to 7.3 gigahertz and it's the ZS407. And then beneath the false bottom, I don't think I need anything out of there, do I? No, I don't, I need the stylus. But there is a room in there to hold all of the things that you need in order to be successful with your tiny SA. Except for, for this test, I'm going to use a dummy load as my source instead of a radio as my source. And I can hear it now, put your pitchforks down. It's not that kind of thing. Why am I using a dummy load instead of using an antenna? I want a controlled environment. That antenna hears everything around me. It's gonna hear local AM and FM radio stations. It's gonna hear my charge controller and inverters and stuff from people around the RV park. It's gonna hear Bluetooth, it's gonna hear Wi-Fi. it's gonna hear everything. What I'm doing is I'm working in extremely close proximity to the meter when I'm doing these tests. You'll see it as we get to actually doing the test, but that's the reason for the dummy load. It is right up against that meter and I want just the RF that's coming from the meter. I don't want any of that other stuff that I mentioned from the environment around me. The other thing is, is that if you guys decide to run this test with your tiny SA at home with any of your devices, you'll be able to repeat it as well because you can control your environment a lot better with a dummy load attached than you can with an actual receiving antenna attached. And with any test, you wanna isolate as many things as possible. Make this repeatable, make it isolated, make it specific. And this is how the commercial EMC slash RFI labs get this job done. Always into a dummy load or a shielded setup, never a free radiating antenna. Let's get to the test. So first let's establish a baseline and let's get the tiny SA better into the frame. There we go. So first let's establish a baseline. I'm gonna do a frequency range with a start of one megahertz and a stop of 60 megahertz. And then let's check our resolution bandwidth. Auto, try to be a little more controlled. Let's see if 10 kilohertz is, is patient enough for us. You can see there's a little green line drawing across the bottom. The first sweep is always a little off and this first sweep is taking a very long time. So maybe 10 wasn't a good enough choice. Let's do resolution bandwidth of 30. All right, 30 is a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. And down the right-hand side, you can see my scale. And this yellow line is about minus 65 with a couple of spikes here and there. The meter is currently off and we're still settling down. Let's turn on the waterfall because it's pretty and we like waterfalls. And what we'll do is we'll get a full sample on the waterfall, this full section of the screen here. And I'll speed this up for you because this is gonna take some time at this speed. We are not changing any more and there's a little little tiny line there and let's do display and we're going to turn the waterfall off because i want to get a fresh start on the waterfall so now minus 65 is down here and our line has moved down to where we want it to be what i'm going to do next is turn on the meter and you'll see the meter booting up and then we'll do the exact same thing we'll do waterfall on and now the waterfall is going to fill up this area down here at the bottom of the screen. And we'll come back when we have a full waterfall. All right, we look happy there. But T.O., that sweep is from 1 to 60 megahertz and you don't have enough data points and that's just horrible and you're doing it wrong. Let's do it a different way. Some better lighting so we can see that. Now I can't see it, but you guys can see it. So what I'm gonna do instead of sweeping from one to 60, I'm gonna turn that waterfall off, play, unpause, on waterfall, and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna do frequency, and I missed, frequency, and we're gonna do zero span. And we're gonna do 3.5 megahertz for 80 meters. And hopefully this will stay persistent. If not, you will only get one line. Display, draw a line, and we're gonna do minus 60 
1x. And this isn't a pass or fail line, this is just a reference line. So the noise floor with the meter on is at 160. The noise floor with the meter on is at minus 65. Let's turn it off and we should see the noise floor go down if this is noisy, right? And I see no change. All right, let's change this to frequency, zero span of seven megahertz. Did we keep our line? We kept our line, awesome. And so we're still at that minus 65 range. Let's turn it on. We should see this thing jump up. Oops, I turned my radio on. Turn that off. But the radio doesn't generate any RFI either. Okay. I don't see any change there. Let's go up in frequency, zero span. Let's do 10.1 megahertz. No change. No change. Let's go up in frequency. Let's do 20 meters, 14 megahertz. No change. No change. So my antenna setup here is at 24 megahertz. So even with this thing having a quarter wave vertical on it, still not really seeing a whole lot of noise on the frequency of interest. That's 24 megahertz. Let's do one more. Let's do 28. Zero span, 28 megahertz. I still see nothing special going on. And let's do zero span of 146 megahertz. Nothing. Let's do zero span of 446 megahertz. Nothing. We're still minus 65. Actually, we're actually closer to 70. I'm not seeing anything going on noise-wise with the meter on or off. So are any of us wrong here? I'm not 100% sure if any of us are wrong here. And the reason why is because we might all be testing under different conditions. My meter did not come with a USB power source. It might be your USB power supply that is causing this. Anytime you have a small little tiny DC power supply, it's probably a switching power supply. And that is a noise generator normally. Now, to be fair, I do have a 30 amp ham radio bench power supply made by Alinko. Well, it's branded by Alinko. I don't know who actually makes the thing. And it is a switching power supply and it was running the entire time because you saw me accidentally turn on the 857 there. It's not adding any noise either. That's another myth. They, they kind of fixed the noise in ham radio switching power supplies a while back. And even in the ones that don't, they have a noise offset to take care of that as well. So I'm not seeing any RFI on this. I think it's just as good as any other meter that is out there, certainly as good as the MFJ that I compared it to or the Nisei that I compared it to in the other test. I will leave links in the description down below for the tiny SA and for this really awesome 3D printed protection case to protect your instrument as well as for the CQV meter. I'm not endorsing it, I'm just showing you what is going on and what my results are. If you have a test that is different, please type in the comments down below what your test scenario is and let me know and I will replicate it here. There's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome, I'll see you over there.